welcome to what is this? This is just catch up. Welcome to this catch up. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to this catch up. No, welcome to this Pride of Irons catch up. Um, I'm Jim. Uh, I'm co actually, am I co chair? I don't know. I was co chair of Pride of Irons. We had our AGM last weekend. I couldn't make it, unfortunately. So I may not be. Uh, who knows? I, I, I was. I may be, hopefully. Um, maybe. But someone who. <laughs> but someone who definitely is on the committee of Pride of Irons is Brandy. Brandy, re recently elected. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good and um, I'm very, I'm so proud to be able to represent Pride of Irons. Um, I have some fantastic ideas and I just want to make a difference and I want to get um, the word out that uh, we're inclusive of everybody and everything. Yeah. I want including to straight people like Rob. Yes. Hello, Rob. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Just in case people didn't realise, I was watching back the last video and I was like, would people know that Rob was straight? Would they just think he was a big Married gay man? Married with a child. <laughs> or is <Right>. he? <laughs> plenty, of, plenty, of, plenty of men have been married with children and later in life they have been decided that uh, actually no. Right, moving on. Um, so this this little catch up is just really look where we are. What what is it? The ninth of October today. Um, I should have checked this before we start recording. Eighth of October. So we are four league games into the season and three cup games. Uh, we caught up prior to the start of the season. We had a few chats around what our expectations were, what we thought in terms of what's going to happen with the signings, where we thought we needed to strengthen. Uh, and all that business. We're now, you know, a few weeks down the line, a few games under our belts. So I just wanted to check in and see, you know, what we made of, of what's happened so far. So I'm going to just jump straight in with the Newcastle game. Um, I, in our last video, Brandy, you said you predicted that we would lose against Newcastle. Um, and you said we'll probably lose against Newcastle, but I suspect we'll continue to upset the bigger teams. So Based on that, I don't think you've done too bad. No, absolutely. <laughs> but let's start with that Newcastle game. Um, what, what did you, so, Rob? What did you make of it? Like, the, I mean, I could go on about what I thought of the players' spirit and all the rest of it. But what did you make of it watching that game? I actually think it was we lost that game due to uh, Grady being sold a little bit. I know it's you can't really say professional players would do that, but you can just tell in the way they were playing. It was very I don't know. Unenthusiastic, wasn't it? Really, it was. We didn't do. We didn't do the simple things right. The little passes, you know, the positioning. Maybe it was just. Maybe it was just because everyone was very really relaxed after we had such a high towards the end of last season. But it was. I didn't expect it to be like that. I actually expected us to kind of, kind of, you know, go flying out the traps, you know. But I totally get that. Continue the yeah. momentum that you left yeah. off, and instead it was like shoulders down. Loads yeah. of misplaced passes, like Rice made loads and like sloppy tackles as no well. Tracking back. It was just, no tracking back at all. Yeah, the the attitude just didn't seem to be there. They it seemed like there was something on their minds. I mean, what did you read into it, Brandy? Yeah, well, definitely. I I just didn't think they came out. They were really flat, and um, it didn't seem like uh, anybody really wanted to be there. And I think that. Uh, you have to say that they had Grady on their minds because they were, they were, even the players were tweeting about it. Yeah. Um, and that says a lot when the players are um, tweeting things about it, especially the captain. Mm -hmm. uh, so when Mark Noble has something to say, the players listen and so do the supporters because he is Mr. West Ham and, you know, he's, he's a legend. So, I just don't think they showed up and I don't think they wanted to play that game. And, uh, yeah. Do you think it'd been, uh, do you think it'd been different if um, Grady was still there? Do you reckon we'd have been a different team? I don't, I don't know. Cause I just, weird question, isn't it really? <laughs> yeah. They, they, I just thought that Newcastle with the signings that they had and, uh, I was going to say the, the summer, but what was the break? couple of weeks yeah absolutely. <laughs> but with the break they had um i knew i just had a newcastle was coming on strong they were and they did they showed up to play but i we we're, we're not the team that's gonna 
do that every single game, but I just had a feeling that was the way that first game was going to be. So I, I, I think you're probably right with the signings they made. You know, they, they've got Callum Wilson, who's going to score. So it's kind of like that whole yeah. Lukaku, Everton thing where you know you've got to score at least one goal just to draw because you know you're going to concede <laughs> at least one. So you knew that was going to happen. But I think the Grady thing is an absolute catalyst for, uh, for, for not even having a chance in that game. You couldn't even get a foothold in that game because you're right, right. the players did not want to be there. And when you've got the captain putting out a message that strong, and all of the other players, you know, some of them made their own comments, but a lot of them literally just retweeted him, you know, just kind of, you know, saying, I agree with you. And I spoke to someone from one of the other uh, fan groups um, just yesterday. And, you know, he had the same feeling that we've got this kind of, it's almost like it's created a siege mentality within the team now, because previously it kind of seemed like it was the fans versus the owners and the players were kind of stuck in the middle. Whereas now the players have kind of spoken, it feels like the fans and the players are on a level and in agreement. Yeah. And I think that creates a really good mentality. I think we're going to need it going into future games because we'll, we'll, we'll catch up on this, no doubt. But you know, with the, with the squad that we've got now after the transfer window, I think we're going to have tough times. But let's just kind of then jump to the... I don't want to linger on Newcastle too much because it wasn't a great game and we know, we know what the, the atmosphere was. <laughs> yeah. But... Well, that, that second point, Brandy, that you made about us turning up against the bigger teams. So then the Arsenal game, which we didn't win, but complete like psychological turnaround. It was. They, they uh, the whole team, it, it was like they probably got that first game out of the way. And while well, there was a cup game in between, but I believe that um, Noble probably said something in the dressing room and the team responded. Yeah, I feel like it was kind of like that Newcastle game maybe was a statement and they made their statement and then got their heads down. I thought yeah. we was really unlucky to get something out of it. I didn't watch the game live. I had to watch it on repeat the next day because me and Jim was at a wedding. And uh, I was very, very impressed of how we played. I thought we looked like a different team to me. And uh, I think a few decisions went away. I think we may have got something out of it. and Maybe we should have got something out of it. But, well, the, the the penalty decision with the the sleeve that's too long. So if you you've know, got a longer sleeve, you're you're not going to give away handball. It's a penalty for me. If if you go by the other rules and the other decisions that were given in other games, it's a penalty. So it for me, just kind of like, what is the rule? <laughs> you know, this is like, the exact problem. Is that, you know, people talk about VAR being the problem. VAR is not the problem. It's the no. ap application of the rules across the yeah. board, right? The, the camera isn't wrong. The camera, does, the camera shows was. what happened, right? It, it either happened or it didn't. But it's the person interpreting that and yes. making the decision. So whether it's, you know, lightning speed and you have to watch a replay or it happens slow enough that the ref can make a decision, you've got to be consistent. And you can't yeah. say that it's handball if your shirt's this big, but if your yeah. shirt's this big, it's not. No, it's bullshit. And, and it always seems to be arms. us. It always seems to <laughs> be <laughs> us that gets the, the these. Right. And it, I'm sure every club says this, but it does yeah, feel a bit like we are fucked over by, by these decisions more often than not. But, but that aside, sorry, mate. That, that aside, the performance clearly was just like Jekyll and Hyde to, compared to Newcastle. I thought when the bar come in, we get decisions. Sorry. I thought um, when Var come in, we'd get a lot more decisions. We there was like the season before yes. uh, Var come in, but there was things that if there was Var, we'd have been literally. They showed a league table, didn't they? I think someone yeah. from Sky Sports, some analyst from Sky Sports, Sports did analysis on it. Of course, he did because he's an analyst. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he did some analysis on it and showed that um, we would have like I think we would have been something like fourteen points better off. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Have been reviewed correctly. I think in a Europe <laughs> position, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, Man City would have had more points than they already did. I know they won the league that season anyway, but they would have had even more points and mm. Liverpool would have had even less and it actually wouldn't have been that close a uh, run. Really? Cool, that's interesting. I'd like to say that. Mm. <laughs> the media darlings. You know that, that Arsenal match, so we're talking about that penalty I just want to go back to quickly. I saw something on Twitter. I th I'm pretty sure it was Southampton who had a penalty awarded and someone put the pictures side by side, and it was the exact same position. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. They are. So <laughs> when someone said, um, I can't remember who it was, but someone suggested that maybe um, because 
there's humans involved, that there all, there's always a chance that there can still be uh, people's uh, thoughts and influences that get in yeah, the way. Bias. Yeah. Yes, bias. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely yeah. bias, and it's not. I'm not saying it's necessarily bias against West Ham or for other teams, but I think you know when you've got an, a media narrative about you know Liverpool being the darlings of the, the league, everyone yeah. wanted them to win. Two seasons in a row, every pundit on television wanted them to win, and yeah. they were getting all these decisions. But then when you've got the independent analysis saying that actually I think they'd be nine points behind or whatever it was. I think that goes to show how ingrained that bias is. I think there's a lot of romanticism and nostalgia around the Liverpool of yesteryear. And kind of Klopp, to his credit, has brought back a lot of a lot more of that kind of spirit yes. to that club. But that in itself has ignited this 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 bias that becomes a self fulfilling pro- prophecy because you're going to just start getting decisions that are going to help you. So imagine being a referee a bit well. marginal. Imagine being a referee and all the players surrounding you and going, that can't be a penalty, that can't be a penalty. I mean, you'd be like, oh God, I can't give this. You know what I mean? It's, it's sometimes it's peer pressure, isn't it? It's happened before. But, but but I know everyone <laughs> says this all the time, but in rugby, the ref has a body cam, doesn't he? And yeah. Only the captain's allowed to speak to him. And yeah. if anyone else approaches him, they get a card. Now, they talked about doing that in football, but they never, they never really stuck to it. They never enforced it. It's like the, it's like, you know, red card and penalty decisions or whatever it is like you you make you make your point once and then you just consistently stick to it and in the end people will will follow but if you make the decision once and the next time you're like oh well i'll, I'll leave it this time people know they can try their luck you just have to be rigid 100 percent rigid you go this like they are with the handball rule this is the thing that fucked me off right the handball rule they go right well you know the one with rice last season when it flicked up and hit his arm and the amount of times antonio it flicked up and hit his arm you're supposed to give the benefit oh. of the, doubt to the attacking player and they've gone to the letter of the law though it's a handball therefore we don't give it or to the letter of the law a player shouldn't be approaching the ref but they do so yeah. give him a card yeah, yeah that's sorry right. soapbox <laughs> Go on, Brandy, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, remember there was, a, there was that meme last year, because Antonio, think of all the goals that were taken away, and, you know, there was a meme with his hand that was, like, super-sized, because he kept getting ripped off. Yeah, he, even, he even said, didn't he, like, if, if, I, if I didn't have any hands, I'd have, like, way yeah. more goals this season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so, so, so moving on then, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Cup, the cup game separately, because I think... I yeah. think they're essentially two different squads. But if we if we move on then, okay, so we had that really poor start, heads down, you know, shoulders slumped against Newcastle. Much better performance against Arsenal. Unlucky to not get a point, if not three. You know, if the penalty decision yeah. had gone our way, maybe we would have gone ahead to win that. But still, it was, it was a marginal game. Then to go and play Wolves. <laughs> Rob? I wasn't expecting that <laughs> at all. I was actually quite worried because I think Wolves are a very good counting and tack inside with a lot of pace. But we did something really, really clever. And I think everyone kind of saw it. Is when we played, you know, the three at the back and the wing backs, and we played two in the hole. Um, I think we doubled up with Arthur, King Arthur, as he's crowned himself now on Twitter, if you ever look, and Creswell on um, Torre. And Torre? So Try they right. basically, yeah, they, so if one of them got past it, one of them cut back, they just made his life hell. We couldn't do nothing. And he got taken off in 70. He got taken off. I was, yeah. And I'm considering so the damage, the, the last time he played them towards the end of last season, he, he got subbed on. Like he came yeah. on late and, and still got got, like assisted. Yeah. Did he score or did he assist? Yeah, he, got I mean, goal, way. Yeah. he had, you know, that impact. So for us to have completely turn the game plan around on him, yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it, was really, it was really smart. I really love that formation for West Ham because, you know, I think Arthur, you know, King Arthur coming in, you know, and I'm going to keep calling it that from now on, yeah, coming in has, has changed that dy- dynamics. It's given us pace as well. And you've got, obviously, got Jared Bowen and we've got, um, you know, for now, who can now drop in to the midfield to pay them little horse fruit, which he did for Bowen on, you know, the weekends. And then we've got, the, we've got, the, we've got like, you know, Rice in midfield, who's, you know, he's very far. I think he's quite a fast player. He breaks with acceleration, yeah, acceleration brings the ball with him. And I guarantee you, if, if he got injured and it was no ball, it'd be a different game. Because they, because Shuchek and Rice, can they can cover for each other. I might need both of them to go forward. And we've got that lovely back, and we've got them three at the back to hold it. And we've got Creswell who can play football. He can pass the ball, can't he? He just gets the ball, and them two are defending behind him, and he does them lovely balls through. 
it's just a really quite clever it, it, it is a, is a great system and i think we've got some really good players who um i mean obviously i'm worried about the depth but i think we've got some really good yeah. players who play yeah. really good football and enjoy and it's starting to enjoy their football and then brandy i want to pick up that point about um i just want to bring it back to four nails i think you'll probably see on the on the pride of irons chat right i think everyone was kind of slagging off four nails in that game so, well not everyone but some people slag off going Oh, look at him, he's crap, he keeps falling out, he keeps missing shots, blah, 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 blah. But it was his foresight and vision that, that, that um, resulted in two of those goals, right, for Nails. I think the, the free kick that he took really, really quickly, and then the other one, um, didn't he have one off the post that Bowen tapped in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. he was involved in, in two goals. And it's kind of like, well, okay, he may not be putting away the shots from six yards where he's blasted over, but if he's not involved in those other movements, he's not going to score. So, or other people aren't going to score, sorry. So he's really involved. I mean, Brandy, what are you, what are you making of four now since he came into the team? Well, he, he's, like you say, he's, I think he's surprised a lot of people. But, you know, I think um, that whole, like, look at Cresswell too. He's another one who, at the beginning of the season, I didn't rate. And I think another guy that gets like, uh, but he has the potential. Look at him. He's playing great. Yeah. Uh, since, he, since he's not been left on his own though I think to, to Rob's point because I think towards the end of last season yeah. he was probably at fault for he's lost his guys. pace hasn't he is that injury he's lost his pace massively he's not fast anymore he was never super fast but he was never you know slow but now he's lost it dramatically but he, that's why he's so good at that kind of centre back thing because he can bring the ball forward he's good he's got a good left peg on him so he brings that ball forward the other two co- uh, cover for him and you've got half on and they can just play the, fo- the football it's, a, it's very clever, I think, personally. Well, look how our midfield is incredible. And, you know, we're not letting in goals. Uh, yes. We have a couple yes. clean sheets. And, uh, you know, I think that has a lot to do. I don't think um, our keepers had much support at all last year at times. And, you know, we're not even giving up that many shots. So Yeah, no, don't forget, it's also as well, it's Fabianzi's last year with us, isn't it? He's, is it his last year? His contract runs up this year. So I, 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 I think, I think it might be his last season with us as well. And I'm hoping, because he'd be 35, 36. So I'm hoping he'll... Yeah, like, but goalkeepers goal can, go can go on for a while, can't they? I think I, I read somewhere that he might want to go back to where he lives. Where's he from? Poland. Oh, Poland. Really? Yeah. But I don't know. You know, things can change. But m- m- Money talks, mate. Let's, let's, let's hope, let's hope <laughs> yeah. that, that that doesn't but happen. A lot of people weren't rating him. They said since his injury, he hasn't been very good. But it takes a while to get back into it, doesn't it, sometimes? I, I don't agree with that. I think he's still one of the one of the best in the league. Hands Hands definitely down. outside Hands definitely down. outside the top teams. But his kicking's not um, very good, though. I've never liked his kicking. I've never been a big fan of his kicking. But he's, uh, th- th- there's worse kicking. things to be bad at for, yeah, as, a, as a keeper. Yeah. But I think, um, going back to what you are saying, um, Brandy, like not having to do much is probably a good thing for, for Fabianski because statistically he's a great shot stopper. I think one of the unenviable um, stats that we had is, you know, the reason he was so high up on the, the ratings with other goalkeepers was because he had to save so many. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you if you reduce, if he's already saving, you know, I don't know how many, but statistically, you know, a high proportion of them he's saving already, give him less shots at him is it going to be even less chance of a goal? So, I mean, I think you know, shield, shield, shielding him is, is, a, is a big thing for us. You well, can't we, rely we, just we on a keeper. We condense that area, don't we, as well, that midfield area. So everything yeah, you has to go the down the wing. But we're doubling up on the wings. So they can't get down there either. And, yep. you know, that's why it's getting, that's why it's becoming so hard for them. We're just playing like this kind of weird bowl shape and then we break from that bowl. <laughs> so, but that, that performance against Wolves was just, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Oh, me either. I was. I went into work buzzing. I did. <laughs> I was just like that. A couple of wolves. Because you, you, you're because you're right. You're right about wolves. And actually, to to in a similar way, Leicester. You know, they play good football. They play good attacking football. And yeah. the kind of club that I'm envious of. Because I'm like, well, why can't we be like that? You know, yeah. profile wise. Not that profile is everything, but profile wise, you think you know West Ham should be able to compete with. The, the resources of, of, of these type of teams, but they seem to just do things so much better. Their strategy seems to be better. Um, you know, uh, Scouting. What's his name? It, yeah, what's his name? Wolves Nuno Espirito Santo. Yeah, like a, 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 you know, a, a manager like him to come in and just completely, you know, 
how would you how would you phrase it? I tell you, you know what I tell. You, I'll just be I'll just be honest. The last time I remember Wolves being in the Premier League was like what Mick McCarthy era. Like <laughs> yeah. so, so that's what that's what I think of when I think of Wolves is like that. And then he comes in and brings this really stylish way of playing. These really great players. And it's just, I don't know, I'm just envious, I guess. Well, he knows the Portuguese league, doesn't he, as well? And because they got him when they were in the championship and he had that time to bed in and bring the team up with him, it's that whole trust thing as well. And they, they know he's got a vision and, what he, and there's something that he wants to do and build. And they go with it and he's doing it, you know? And and they, maybe that's what we're getting with. They? they lost um, Jota to um, Liverpool. Jota, is it Jota? I think you'll come with his name there. Yeah, it's like um, Portuguese winger to Liverpool, 40 million. He's one of their better players. And so hopefully they can replace it, but or hopefully they can't. <laughs> Maybe that's what we're getting with um, with Moyes now, is that we've got a manager with a plan. And the, the, you know, the last two spells, he's come in as an emergency manager in, for a, you know, half a season. Now we're seeing him as a manager who's put down roots and is putting in a bit more of an infrastructure and a plan. Maybe we're now seeing the fruits of that. Yeah. I, I, I hope I hope so. Anyway, it all just it depends on if he gets a player that he wants, which I don't think he really. I think I don't know because it's really confusing because you always hear really can like very different things. You hear like when there's a player signing, it's a good player. You always hear David Sullivan saying, "Yeah, I want to sign him, and he's my player." And then <laughs> and then uh, you know if he's a bad player, David Sullivan. Never Paul Lee, what was his name? Wellington Paul Easter. Let's just leave it. Yeah, there, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, so before we get into transfers, then just just finally the the game against Leicester. Um, I think being a West Ham fan is being being a West Ham fan is being realistic um, and accepting yeah. the highs when they happen and enjoying yeah. them, um, but expecting the lows. <laughs> <laughs> so right after that Wolves performance, to have that Leicester performance was. I get. I was just as shocked. Yeah, three nil, and look at uh, look at our goal differential differential on the table too. Four goals. I can't help but think um, having people like Mark Noble and then uh, like off field uh, Kevin Nolan, you know, pushing and pushing and pushing a, a tough tough player. And, you know, uh, Kufal coming in, um, you know, he's got a lot of big game experience. So, he, you know, he's a bit older, but... Uh, 28, isn't he? Yeah. 28. Yeah. But, you know, he's got big game experience playing for his country and playing in the Champions League. I can't help but think, like Jim, you said, like to, you know, our highs and lows, but we're going to grind. We're going to grind. And I honestly think... Last year, there were so many times, you know, the, the Rainbow Laces game, um, Arsenal. Oh, God. And you know, yeah, I know. Yeah, because you were with Joe. I can't imagine how painful that must have been in the second half. But, you know, I was with a friend from Canada who was there, and I was proud to show him London Stadium. I was proud to introduce him to the Pride of Irons. I was proud to introduce him to West Ham. And we were we were doing so well. And then we felt everything went apart. So I honestly think that all these little pieces of grinders that are what we expect as West Ham supporters are going to change the way we play this season back to where we don't give up. You know, keep playing, keep playing. Now, we didn't have to do that against Leicester. We just Three, just played yeah. football. Yeah. Just, just played bloody football. Yeah. Bloody football as well. And, and, and football. it was. It was lovely. But I think yeah. just very quickly touching on that Kufal point, to come in and that be your first game. He only signed a few days yeah. before that. Oh, to come yeah. in and show. Do you know what? I loved to see it. I loved to see the grit, the bottle, the willingness to chase, the willingness to like put a tackle in to get up you know dust himself off after being um you know because he, he, he was on the receiving end wasn't he quite quite a hard tackle at one point um he laughed at it though did you see he, got, he laughed and got up again and laughed it was funny that's just just <laughs> just that kind of character you can't help but love in football one it just gets stuck in straight away and it's it's just not, well. not that not that he's hard or anything like that, but just just no nonsense i'm just going to do my job yeah this is my yeah. job i'm gonna do my job and yeah, yeah the cross uh, the cross is, he's yeah. a very very reliable player 
And I think what they're thinking is as well, because I think it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't Fredericks getting injured, if I'm honest, because I think they were going to try and replace left back more than anything. But where Fredericks got injured, and they think, okay, then we've got Johnson that can cover there, and Johnson can play left back as well, can't he? So they think, okay, we've got enough cover now, and I, and I thought they're, they're not going to replace left back. And I think it was quite a smart move in the end. I was a, I've got to admit, I'd, I've only watched him a couple of times, but he I thought it was an outstanding <laughs> debut of Armist, and quite looking forward to seeing more for him as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I, I think it probably helps that he's got um, Suchek. They used to play together. They played together in the national team yeah. as well. Um, you know, already having someone there that you know, kind of introducing you. And, I, and I've seen the videos from Mark Speaking Noble. About how they in- yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Just having one of your yeah. countrymen there. But I've seen the videos from Mark Noble talking about what he does when um, a new player comes in, he puts an arm around the shoulder. Got to be honest, to the West Ham media team, um, you know, who do some great content, but that one is one of those ones where the timing was a bit like because we talk about how we welcome new players and at this point we've only signed uh, is he yes. the only one we've actually signed? No, we, signed we signed him we, we, signed, we, signed, we signed a young boy from AFC Wimbledon yeah. <laughs> okay. oh, oh and Suchek t- technically <laughs> yeah alright let's get let's get on let's, let's get on to let's go on to um, transfers but just quickly before we do in that Wolves game this is how tight obviously it is at this stage in the season but the start of that Wolves game we were 18th yeah. By the time we scored our third goal, we were 12th. And then by the time we scored our fourth goal, we were 10th. And we're sitting at, <laughs> we're sitting at 10th now. And, you know, I've, I've screenshot this. <laughs> That's happy, how it is being a, being a West Ham fan because we have positive goal difference. Right. <laughs> which is, is something that we've had once yeah, in the last... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the, the village season, I think, was the first time we have positive gold actually i don't even know how long like it's just ridiculous mm. but that's, that's worth a, a point on its own as we know when when you're fighting down the bottom but let's not talk about the bottom let's talk about transfers so so check um, <laughs> let, let, hang on hang on let's let's not let's not be super t- i mean obviously the overall message is i think quite negative but let's try and let's try and salvage some positives so so check being made permanent fantastic i i Big just see so many goals coming from him i love him He's a, just he's a, running into the box. He's another one. Exactly, he's another one who play. is not hard. He's just no nonsense. Yeah. He just gets on with it, and I love that. I love that work ethic. Six so that's five. that's great. <laughs> Six. Yeah. Well, <laughs> insane. So we've got him. We've got um, Kuval. We've just said looks looks the business, um, and we kept Rice. Yes. Yes. Business yeah. okay. And I think I hope we can get him to sign a new contract as well. It'd be quite nice. Well, so so what the point I was going to make next was that obviously Noble is not now a guaranteed starter. Mm-hmm. Declan's been given the armband, isn't he? Yeah. Is yeah. that is that perhaps the the thing we're going for now? Noble was club captain, and Rice is the you know the captain on the pitch when when Noble's not starting. But when Noble comes on, he gives it back to him. I just yeah. don't I don't like that. But I think he should keep hold of it. No, I think that's a respect thing, and I don't mind that, if I'm honest. I think he should carry on. He's done a good job. He should carry on doing it. I think the, the person who starts is the one who should be captain to the end, I think. But if Weiss were not, and he was on. I do agree. I think that Noble should say, no, you keep it. It's, yeah. Yeah. I think that massively. Well. But I, th- I don't think it's in the world because we're winning. We're winning. So, you know, if it was a, if it was down, I'd say maybe. But... I think we've got to try and get him a contract in now, but the problem is, is doesn't Sullivan, don't they, they don't like to do a contract to, to the summer? I, I, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I just, I give up with, with, with that side of things, honestly. Um, Predicting. <laughs> Rice, Rice is definitely the best bit of business we did. Um, hands down, hands down. Hands down. And so, yeah. yeah, we didn't sign anyone. Our bench is really thin, but definitely the best business we did. And I honestly, you know, I just look at all of Rice's connections. You know, part of me, I know that the world has changed and people are chasing dollars. And I guess, um, you know, they want to play in Europe. But I honestly think that Rice might still be different. I think that he might still be, have an old school mentality um, where this is my club and I'm going to do what I can for this club. 
And I, I just, maybe that's just me in my heart wishing yeah. that. I mean, um, maybe, I it well. <laughs> it's just, may, maybe it's um, in some regard the influence of Noble. You know, he's been yes. young enough to watch Noble you know, rise up through the team the way he has, take the armband, be a one one club man. Maybe yeah. some of that's rubbed off on him. Who knows? Well, he's a good young man too. He's a very good young man. Yeah, he does he's seem like a very crazy. nice guy. Yeah, it's very rare for football, isn't it? Yeah, very rare for for, for, certain, for yeah. certain age groups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been that age. <laughs> yeah, I've been. But isn't he, is he still living with his parents? Like, uh, no, 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 he lives in well, Chelsea. He lives in uh, Chelsea, doesn't he? No, no, he lives near Chelsea's training house. Somewhere near yeah. Slough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. His girlfriend lives yeah. around there and his best mates yeah. who all play for Chelsea. Yeah. So it's well, bit... he's not family at Chelsea. He's old oh, man's a massive yeah. Chelsea fan as well. I think he's a massive Chelsea fan as well. But, you know, yeah. doesn't, I don't think that really matters nowadays. But I, I, I just... I, you know, I think he's got honor. I honestly think he's got yeah. honor. I, I can feel it in his. I can feel it. I think he's got honor. I think we have so, a good season, and we we maybe push ourselves up the table if we can, and we kind of get some players in. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, maybe it'd be good enough. I think if we have another rocky season and Chelsea come in for him, I think he won't. You can't. In that, at that point, you can't blame a player for going. No. But but yeah, looking that's true. looking back to to this to this transfer window, so clearly we've got some financial issues mm-hmm. being linked to COVID. I know that David Sullivan raised what was it thirty million quid's worth of equity to inject into the club during lockdown. Obviously, yeah, our so season Jim tickets Wack now telling us the other day on Talksport about that. Oh <laughs> fuck that bloke! Um, <laughs> we we also that's obviously we're getting the refunds on our games that we can't attend and they are offering us 10 percent on top if we take it if we leave it in the club rather than taking it out so if we keep it as club cash and then obviously the the most apparent uh act that's linked to finance is we have let a huge number of players go um wages included being you know being not just the sales money but you know the wages that we're saving so wiltshire i read somewhere he was the second highest paid player at the club yeah. I mean, I know we got him for free, but didn't his hell. contract cost three point eight million to cancel or something? Yes. So, so how many? Who do who do we let go? So we let Wilkshire go. Yeah. Anderson's gone off on loan. Grady. Yeah. Sorry, Grady. Yep. Yeah. Um, Silver's gone out on loan. Colin. Yeah. Eight hundred grand. Eight hundred grand was it? Something like that. He's gone because he was the other okay. contract. Um, Obviously, we um, lost. Um, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah, Ngakia. Yeah. Um, oh, that one hurts too. That one's still, yeah. did, did you see he got player of the month as well in the championship? Did he? Yeah, really? yeah that's a surprise. Apparently he's, apparently, he's been outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. They're, they're all raving about him. That's so, in our, in our last video, we we talked about the, you know, the lack of transfer activity that happened at that point. And one of the things that we talked about was, well, maybe we'll have to rely on youth a bit more to, to patch up where we don't have cover. But it looks like we've let a lot of those go too. Yeah, there's a lot of young players gone. There's a, a youngster as well gone to Leighton Dorian as well. One of our centre backs, he's gone. He went time the other day. There's a season on loan as well. Silver's gone to that Greek club as well. So he's gone as well. Which tell I thought, really, what, I thought would start. I was, I was really surprised by that. Tell, tell you what though, and we're not going to have enough time to cover all the cup, the cup games. We can yeah. all agree that Go the way we went out was shameful, I'm sure. But yeah. the um, was it the first or second game where the two youngsters came on the two um, wing backs? So, yeah, Ashby so Har- is it Harrison, yeah, yeah, so he, he yeah. dislocated his finger, didn't he? Yeah, he, he looks, looks fantastic. fantastic, and he almost scored as well. Yeah. He's he Christ looks like a nice way he runs. He's like when him, he's like you know, six foot, just he just can peg it up and down, up and down. I looked, re- he looked really impressed with him, and the centre back is always Lee's. He looks fantastic as well for me. Oh, apart from the fact he immediately, uh, you know, was <laughs> he was immediately at fault for the goal, wasn't he? As soon as he no, came that was on, a, that was a long go. That was a long go. Who was fault? Was for the, for the oh, okay. I thought it was, oh, I thought no, this came on. Leeds, Leeds was the centre back. Oh, he okay. Him. He was like six foot one. He was really composed on the ball. I was really impressed with him actually. When you talk about how um, Ashby runs, um, I, I get, I know where you're coming from. I know the style because when I see Rice run, sometimes I think of Jack Collison. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, gangly, with, but without without the arms, so Jack Collison was yeah. like an aeroplane. 
Uh, like I don't think Rice is like, yeah, I don't think Rice is like an aeroplane, but it's the same style of, it's like quite weaving. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he looks like he's going to be really energetic. And just, just remember, he's only 18 as well. And he was like, he looks like a, a big man that can compete with other big men. And he's still got like another three years of growing. <laughs> so like, he could just, just have to become an absolute league unit, you know. But I really hope he's, hoping we see him in the first team because I think he's a, a wing back as well, a right wing back. So we've got quite a lot of cover there at the moment. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Well, let's hope that we don't need him. But the, the thinness of the squad, because one of the things that you mentioned in the, the last um, video, Rob, is you said we need more balance to the squad and more depth. Yeah. And arguably what we've done instead is gone, right, well, let's just, you know, not, not rebalance at all. Kind of Cut bring in a couple of extra players and then, then get rid of a... <laughs> Yeah. Get rid of so, so, so you've got just as much balance, but half as much depth. How many players have we got left? Seven, 18 players? 17 or 18, I think. Sorry, Brandon. Yeah. Well, I was going to say something different, but, you know, we last year and the year before had a lot of injury time. What happens if that carries on? But I just wanted to ask, what do you think it does to the mood in our academy when we're not showing faith in our academy players and just getting rid of them what do you yeah. think it well the, the 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 thing that happened um was really? it by a f there was that wasn't there a youngster that we went in for that didn't wouldn't even consider coming to us yeah yeah there's i'm sure i read i'm sure i read somewhere there was a young player wouldn't even consider coming to us because of, what was that no well we 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 had a really really good young player really fantastic and he just went you know, I don't think i get an opportunity here. As he went to Porto instead. Apparently, uh, he's, he's, uh, there he's going to be good enough to play for Porto soon. So if he's going to be good enough for them... Well, and Ngakia. Yeah. Ngakia didn't yeah. feel like... That, I mean, whatever we're going to be paying in wages for yeah. um, Kufal, when you could have just kept Ngakia if you'd given yeah, him a good exactly. enough deal. Well, he's... But the problem is, though, he's, to talk to him over yeah, he's, time, you know, and find yeah. out what was in his right. head. Well, his agent is Reese Oxford's agent, though. And I heard he's I not the most of um, humble of people. So yeah, well, I think he got a bit of a bad deal there. I think maybe, but in the long run, but who knows? They're top of the league, and they say. <laughs> well, I guess the squad, uh, depth, it's, the squad depth worries me, if I'm honest, because like Brandy said, if one, you know, they say Antonio, he's got, you know, he's got hamstring prop, he's got bad hamstrings, hasn't he? So. If he gets a hamstring injury and then we put Heller up front, he's going to slow the game down massively. He doesn't do the same game as Antonio does. And um, if Boeing gets injured or Suchek or Rice gets injured, then we bring, you know, we bring Noble in. The game dramatically changes. But then we haven't got plan B because we've got no one else to do a plan B with. Exactly. And it, well, yeah. So we can't change it. Or if we get centre-back, it's injured. Or two of them get coronavirus because we obviously the testing keeps going on. We're in trouble, you know, and that's, that's something that really worries me. And that's why I was hoping, I, 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 you know, I, obviously I wanted some good players to come in. And that's what David Moyes wants. He doesn't want squad players. He wants players who can improve the team. But I think we actually need some squad players. <laughs> we do, just, but, just but on a positive note, now that we're out of one of those pesky cups, all of those players who were playing in those cups will be well rested. That's true. <laughs> We had 33 old snoggers playing in the central, the central midfield. Oh, yeah, that I goal we scored was an absolute oh. beauty. I, I think he would be about really, it. really good on the tip of the diamond, snoggers, because he's got a lovely vision and he's got a lovely shot on him and pass. I think it just it's, it's perfect there because it's not too much running, but he runs still. He runs yeah. like he's, he's, you know, he's, he's got like five minutes to live before the bomb goes off. So he always <laughs> shows effort. He's always grinding, always showing yeah. effort. And, and that's if you're playing the pitch like that, it you know it rubs off on other other players, doesn't it? Yes. You know, yeah. and so it's 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 in you know it's infectious, and that's what you. He's, want. A, he's a lovely guy as well. We met him once um, before a match. Um, you know, uh, Ian's son Kenzie, he was yeah. there, and he got he got to oh, meet oh, a couple oh. of the players. And Snodgrass, they all kind of gave him a high five and stuff. But Snodgrass stopped and had a little chat with him. And it, was, yeah. it was really it was really I've heard, nice. I've heard nothing but amazing things about him. If I'm honest. That's something Kenzie will never forget for the rest of his life. <laughs> I don't know. He's getting into rugby now, so maybe he'll forget about football. Uh, no, he'll forget about football. It was, it was still rugby, so. What a great kid. <laughs> well, look, we've been chatting for quite a while now, so I think we'd best wrap it up. Uh, probably didn't cover half the topics, but it was a good chat. Um, yeah. Overall, though, just kind of come back to something that I said that, that I asked you last time. So 
Brandy, ninth to twelfth, you said you think we're going to finish. You're going to stick with that? I am, and I, I think that we have three tough games coming up in a row, but I'm calling for four points. Four yeah. points. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob, you said you don't see us finishing any higher than 15th. Yeah. You sticking with it for now? Oh, do you know what? I think we might just go above that, if I'm honest. <laughs> oh, no! He's got a dreaded, dreaded case of the optimist, optimist curse. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a West Ham fan, you know? I, I get excited. I get, it's a good time at the moment. You know? but I, okay. yeah, I hope, Let I hope... me see if this sways you. Okay, we are four games in. Yeah. And we only have 34 points till we're safe. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a perspective to put on it right we've, we've, yeah, scored half, yeah. we, we've, we've won half of our games we've earned half the points available we are you know what if the, the golden pass? number is 40 points and we've got six already you know and of those four points that that brandy's talking about we're a quarter of the way there do you know what worries me though it's something that Brandy West said. Ham. West Ham uh, worries you. Yeah, they always worry me. I, I reckon I'd be a different person if I didn't support West Ham. I reckon I'd be a millionaire. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but we, obviously we've got, we got, you know, Tottenham and we've got Man City. But then we've got all the other little games afterwards where we fall Those apart. are the ones we'll fuck up. Yeah, yes. and that's what worries me. Because if we can play how we play against the bigger teams, yeah, we'd be absolutely, we'd be quite a frightening team. But the problem is we don't turn up. It's something. It's something yeah. about it, and I, I think I think we need some more leaders who can actually say that every single game is the same. Come on, go out there, put your foot in, win that first tackle, win that first header. Simple. I as think that. we just need to keep enjoying our football because that's the one yeah. thing I've noticed. Yeah, that's the thing. Enjoy they're enjoying you know? our football. You know, if you enjoy your football, you you just you're you're free to express yourself. If you're free yeah. to express yourself, it'll come naturally. And that's the thing I think. That's why I think Fort Nails is going to come really good. Because I've seen just just glimmers of stuff here and there, and I'm like, okay, you've not quite managed it, but you've you've had the vision. You've 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 you know you you you're going for something. You're not just bumbling along. You you know you know what you're trying to do. Like that through ball for Boeing, fuck me, that was oh. so beautifully you know, weighted. Remember me of Yossi? Remember Yossi, the Iranian? It reminded me just like him. It did. Does that little beautiful through ball? Me timed it beautifully. And I think me and you talked, Jim, absolutely about a year ago, maybe last season, we said if Fernandes played more through the middle and Hammy and Sissy really had last season, how many would he have then? And I think it's I, I, I think um, Moyes, Moyes cocked up when he came in and dropped Fernandes and started playing Lanzini. I, I think yeah. that was a mistake. I did. Well, he just went on Lanzini's name, I think, personally. And I think he went on him because he's a bit more pacier in him. But um, I still think he the position suits him because he's like, you know, Masiaku's left wing and he comes into the middle. I think he's a better player he's in the middle and he can and he can dictate the play. And he's what's he got now? Two assists and one goal? Well, I think he needs to find his, his rhythm and his shooting boots. But when he does, I think he's going to be... I, I think in a couple of years, this is my prediction, we're going to struggle to hang on to him. Yeah, I, but things are, he's a really skillful player as well. Have you ever seen the videos of him when he played in Spain? He does all his little Mate, I've seen, I've seen videos of Julian Faubert looking like a world beater, so don't you talk <laughs> to still, me about he, videos. Julian Faubert was amazing. He had the best cross ever <laughs> with a fag in his mouth crossing it. <laughs> he had the best snooze ever, sleeping on the bench of <laughs> Real Madrid. He called, he called me a shit. <laughs> Julian Faubert, he called me a shit. You shit, he called me. Wait, was, what? He called me a shit, yeah. I was stirring up some trouble. He, he wrote something and it was against, it was something to do with West Ham tweet. And it was a, uh, the language was really wrong. And I said, oh, you naughty boy. And he went, no, you shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I was a little I kid. I, was, you... I said, sorry. <laughs> I hope you've, uh, I hope you screenshotted this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I might, I might have to find it. I'll go back and try and find it. It must still be on there. Amazing. <laughs> Right, look, we're going to have to wrap up. That's all we've got time for. But uh, before we sign off, any final words from you, Rob? I want to be known as the shit from now on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all you get as a final word. Brandy? Um, <laughs> isn't it great winning? I mean, we all feel good. What um, absolutely, what yeah. 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 And I Don't get used to it. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I, I can't help, I can't help yeah. but be negative. <laughs> uh, uh, we still want the window, the championship window, though. So we might bring some. There's, there's a few good players in there still, so we might still bring some players in. So well, let's check back in in a month and see if we have. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Good talking to yes, everyone. Let's do that. Yeah, it was great. Right, time, well, thanks, 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 everyone for watching. Um, do, you know, do you know what I never say on these videos? Do you know I never say, "Don't forget to like and subscribe," and then like point to where the things are. I don't know where they are. You just I don't point know to me. Stuff, I'll just do, no, no, hold the yeah. side. <laughs> right, to me, you're there. No, you're, you're there. There you are. Yeah. Somewhere. Um, anyway, so th this this has been the Michael Barrymore podcast. No, uh, this is <laughs> no. This has been really good to catch up with you folks, and uh, yeah, speak to you next time. Come on, you on. Come on, you on. <laughs>